Is the new iPad mini 6 actually worth $500? Well, today we will talk about everything that Apple didn't mention at their event, both the good things and the bad things, and if you should drop your hard earned money on this device, and if I will be buying it personally. Let's start out with that new design, and it's exactly what I have wanted for years since basically the 2018 iPad Pro came out. It basically looks like that iPad Pro or the new iPad Air 4, just a smaller version. Now we have a lot of differences on the display compared to the other iPads, which I'm going to get into. The new one is 8.3 inches compared to 7.9 inches, but the bezels are larger on the sides than this iPad mini 5, which I love, but they are equal all around. And of course you do need somewhere to hold on. So I'm not really upset about that. Now on the positive side, we still have that ultra high pixel density, 326 pixels per inch, which if you didn't know, the iPad mini is actually have the sharpest display out of any iPad. So Apple did keep that, but our aspect ratio actually changed coming from a 16 by nine display to a 4.6 by three display, which sounds really weird. And this is actually an aspect ratio Apple has never used before. And it is the widest screen on any iPad ever. They did that for one particular reason. Now, when we factor in that change of display size and aspect ratio, we actually lose some pixels on this end over here. So we have less pixels here, but the screen is taller or longer. Now, what that means is that this iPad is going to be fantastic for watching movies because you're going to have less bars on it and you're just, just basically just having that wider display. But when you're holding it this way, it's going to be more like a phone with a taller display. Overall, you're getting about 5.5% more screen real estate. And even though the screen is larger, the thickness is staying the same and the iPad actually weighs less than this one, which is really nice. And with that, the actual width of the device, if you're holding it vertically, is actually identical, meaning that this will be very comfortable to hold with one hand, just like I've been doing. So that is why Apple decided to make the screen a wider aspect ratio. So comfort would stay the same. Now, because the home button is gone now, because the chin and the little forehead here is smaller and equal all around, the device is actually not as tall, it's shorter. So the device overall is smaller, it is lighter, but we have a larger display, which is fantastic. Now, unfortunately, unlike many of the rumors that we have heard, we did not get a mini LED display. We know Apple was testing that, but probably because of costs and yield, they're not including it. So other than the size and the aspect ratio, everything else about the display is the same. The contrast, brightness, color accuracy, and that's not a bad thing. This was a good display. Now, of course, just like the iPad Air 4, we have the Touch ID sensor built into the top with the power button, which is nice. Now, I wasn't a fan of that on the iPad just because it was so large, you had to move your hand out, out of the way. This thing is much smaller, so I believe it's easier to use. You just pull your finger up if you're holding it this way and you could touch it, so it's more convenient. And with that, our volume buttons also got moved to the top as well because now Apple is allowing you to magnetically attach the Apple Pencil 2 to the side. And because it's so small, it's actually shorter than this one, you need all of that space for the Apple Pencil. Now, before I tell you what I am personally most excited about, along with performance, so that is not what I'm most excited about, let me tell you guys, go ahead and subscribe down below if you guys wanna see uh, the comparisons against the iPad Mini 5, against the iPad Air, maybe even against the iPad Pro with the M1. Um, that will also help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. We would greatly appreciate it. Now, what I'm personally most excited about are the speakers. We finally have stereo speakers on the iPad mini. I love this device for watching videos. I loved it for playing games, but it sucks having the speakers be just on the bottom or on the right side when you're holding it this way. All the sound is coming from over here. It sucked. And that's all I really wish for. If they just did that as an update, maybe a year ago, I would be perfectly happy. Uh, but now we have the dual speakers. They're set up in a stereo. So it's going to be great for watching videos, great for playing games. I'm super excited about that. 
And now onto the performance. Of course, we have the A15 Bionic, and let me tell you, it is gonna be insane in this iPad. Now, I was hoping they would put this in. There was a chance they would just stick with the A14 because the iPad Air 4 has that, but no, they didn't. And they didn't even use the slower version of the A15. This thing has the full-blown one from the iPhone 13 Pros with the five-core graphics. Now, this thing is gonna be a beast. It's gonna be the most powerful tablet other than the M1 iPad Pros. It's gonna smoke the iPad Air. It's gonna smoke other iPhones as well. It's gonna be crazy. Now, that is because even with the A14 that had also four graphics cores just like the iPhones, uh, the iPad Air 4 with the A14 had better graphics performance because of thermal throttling. It had quite a bit better performance. Now, this thing is also gonna thermal throttle less than the iPhones, and it has that five core graphics. So, it's gonna be insane as far as gaming performance. Now, even though the tablet is smaller, it is lighter. The battery capacity has stayed the same, meaning that paired with that A15 processor that's much more efficient than before, the battery life will actually be better in the real world. Now, as far as cameras, we also have some massive improvements. We have a 12 megapixel camera on the back. Now, this camera is actually from the iPhone 12S, and we know that because it's rated 4K 30 frames per second with extended dynamic range, and that's the same sensor that is on the iPhone 10S. After that, it ended up shooting 4K 60 with extended dynamic range, but with newer software and the newer processor, the images are better, and we do also have Smart HDR3, which the iPhone 10S does not get. Get. Now, with that, we also have a flash, and that is very convenient for scanning documents and for other tasks, so I'm glad they added this in. They didn't have to. And then we have a huge improvement on the front. I was not expecting Apple to put in their center stage ultra-wide camera on this tablet, but they did. So if you're somebody that does web conferencing, you want to play games, you want to record yourself, um, whatever you want to do with that camera, that is definitely a really nice improvement. And now let's talk about what Apple did not include with the iPad mini 6 or what we're losing if we upgrade to that tablet and some of the downsides. Well, the first one is this headphone jack. It is gone now, even though this device is super thin and the new one's thickness is practically the same, actually slightly thicker, but you won't notice it. And we did have a headphone jack here. Nope, it is gone. So the only tablet that still has a headphone jack is their very cheapest tablet. And that is definitely a bummer. Now with that, you guys see this nice silver color? That is now gone. So we have space gray, pink, purple, and starlight, which is the one that I ordered, but we no longer have the silver or the gold, which kind of is a bummer as well. Now, thankfully, we still have a 20 watt power adapter included in the box. So it's interesting that Apple's making a big deal about it with the iPhones. They want to save, uh, you know, the planet. They want to be more green. But with these devices, they're still including it. And these are much less expensive devices. I would think if they got rid of that, they can make the boxes for these super slim, saving a lot of packaging, saving shipping. But nope, they are including it, which is handy, I guess. But one thing that's not handy is that they did not include the smart connectors on this device like we saw in rumors, meaning that you will not be able to have a really nice keyboard to use with this, which is, I think is okay. This is a pretty small device to use a keyboard for, and of course there are third-party Bluetooth options, just not one of them that doesn't need to be charged and has no latency and possibly a trackpad. Now with that, let's talk about 5G because they did add 5G onto this device. Now this year, if you want LTE, it costs more. Instead of 130 bucks, it's 150. So that is more expensive, and with that, it does does not support millimeter wave. It just supports sub six. So you're not getting the full performance of 5G like you will with the iPad Pro. On the plus side, there are really nice offers from carriers. So if you're willing to sign up for a contract and keep buying a fairly decent data package, you can get all of that money back, maybe even some more. Just make sure you guys read through the fine print and you're okay with everything that you're signing up for. Now, of course, we do have that price increase of $100. We're going from $400, which was already a lot for a small compact tablet, now to $500. That is a big price increase. Is it worth the money? Well, it's really up to you guys. You guys heard everything that you got, all of the updates. To me, it does suck that they're raising the price. I do think it's worth it. I think all the camera upgrades, the front, the back, the flash, the A15 top line performance with the best version of that chip, the better display, and of course, USB Type-C that comes with this redesign. 
that part of it is massive. I think this is a killer tablet. Those dual speakers, man, I'm excited for that. Uh, so I think it's worth the price if you want a, a tablet this size. I think it's gonna be absolutely killer. The one biggest downside to me personally, my biggest complaint is the storage. It still comes with 64 gigs base. And it's weird because with the iPhone 13, they said 64 is not enough. We're giving you 128 for the same price. We're here, we're paying $100 more and the storage is staying there. Now, not only that, that's not the worst part of it, which does suck. If you want more, you have to spend at least $150 more to go up to 256, which for me, that's way too much. I'm never gonna use that amount. With phones, for years now, they allowed you to pay $50 more in order to jump from 64 to 128. Why did they not give us this option? Why could I not pay 50 bucks more, 550, and get 128 gig? No, I have to spend $150 more now and get way too much storage on top of paying $100 more for the tablet itself. That is the biggest bummer. That is why I just bought the base one. I'm gonna rely on iCloud, be a little bit more careful with storage. I don't wanna spend that much on a small device and then just have that wasted space. But overall, this is the update that I've been waiting years for, the new design, Apple Pencil on the side, all of the other updates I mentioned. I'm super excited. Overall, if you can stomach the extra price point with that storage, I think this is gonna be a killer device that you're gonna absolutely love. Or if you're buying it for your kids, which I know my kids are gonna use this thing all the time, they're gonna love it as well. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, you guys can click that subscribe button above if you guys wanna help us reach our goal of a million subscribers and see the comparisons that we're gonna be doing. Check out one of those great videos over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.